you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. And we've got a lot of things to cover today. I'm going to try and cram a lot of news information for you guys into this video. Me uh, run a little bit long, but let's just jump right into it. And let's start off with Hasbro. Just today they announced uh, some details for next week's Hasbro Pulse convention, their virtual convention that they're doing, which will be taking place next Friday and Saturday which is the 25th and 26th. Now there's actually, um, I've talked about this before, there is a preview event that's supposed to take place on the 22nd and all of this is gonna be taking place on their YouTube channel, their Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel. But there's supposed to be some type of preview event that they're doing at noon Eastern time on the 22nd, which is Tuesday. And then of course they're doing the exclusive sales on Wednesday and Thursday for those who pay the 50 bucks for the pre to become a premium member. You'll get your first shot at them on Wednesday. And then the rest of us will get a shot at the exclusives. These are the exclusives that would have been available at San Diego Comic Con. I'm not gonna go over all of them because I, I've talked about these before but those are gonna be going up on Thursday at 12 noon for the rest of us. It's one per household, so hopefully they won't sell out instantaneously. Um, I feel like if you're online around that time period, you'll probably have a fairly decent shot at getting whichever exclusives that you wanna actually get. I, I don't think we're gonna see them like sell out in like three seconds, hopefully. Um, I won't say that 100%, but, but that's my feeling. But then, the main event starts on that Friday, and today they announced what days uh, for the panels that they're doing. They also now they're doing they have a bunch of guests, uh, some uh, music bands, uh, and some celebrity guests. People like John Cena, who's been in the Transformers movies, and 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 uh, the actor who's playing uh, Snake Eyes uh, is is going to be one of their guests. Uh, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters is going to be a guest. So they've got some celebrity guests, some music bands where, that are going to play some, you know, some, some music during this thing. And uh, on Friday, things are going to kick off at 11 a.m. And again, this is all going to be taking place. It, it should be a live stream type event. That's what they say. And it's going to be on their YouTube channel, their Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel. So it's not their Facebook page like, like their normal fan channel uh, live streams have been. This is going to be on their, their, their YouTube channel. So uh, things kick off at 11 a.m. Now for Friday, as far as you know, toy panels, which I think is probably what most of you watching are gonna be interested in, there's going to be the Marvel Legend panel and the Star Wars panel. There's also some, uh, there's a D&D panel and a Magic the Gathering, which are gonna be focused on gaming, not action figures. I don't think they're doing Dungeons and Dragons action figures. But, but there's gonna be some gaming panels as well. But uh, for you watching here, I think primarily you're gonna be focused on the Marvel Legend panel and the Star Wars panel. Now, the thing is though, they have not given specific times for when each of these panels are going to take place. It's kind of like they just won't expect you to watch the entire thing. You know, they say this is gonna start at 11 a.m. and go to around 5 p.m. Eastern time. So that's six hours of content that they're gonna be streaming on, on Friday. And so right now, unless you know they come out at a later date with more specific times, you're kind of where you're either just gonna to have to watch through and you know, if you've got six hours to spend, or you know, wait for somebody like me, but I'm gonna to have to watch all of that stuff unless they come out with more specific times so that I can cover the things that I know you, the viewers and readers of, of the websites are, are most interested in. So I will be doing that. And of course, I'll probably, if you follow me on social media or what have you, I'll be doing shout outs saying, you know, the Marvel panel's about to begin or the Star Wars panel's about to begin or what have you. So, um, and of course we will cover, you know, highlights of those panels on the websites, you know, TNI, Marvelous News, Jedi Insider, Tformers.com. So if you don't have the time to sit around all day watching videos, um, you know, we'll definitely have those highlights on the websites as they happen. So that's, that's Friday is the Marvel and Star Wars. And then Saturday is uh, Transformers, Power Rangers, G.I. Joe. Those are all having panels. Now Ghostbusters, they have on for Saturday, but then when you actually look at their panels that they're doing, they don't list a Ghostbuster panel. So I don't know if they're going to do product reveals for Ghostbusters at this uh, event. But there are power, there's two Power Ranger panels, one that focuses on the toys and the other that focuses on the entertainment portion, the TV series and everything. There's tra multiple Transformer panels and then there's the G.I. Joe panel. 
And I do expect for the GI Joe, uh, I've gotten pretty firm confirmations that uh, the next wave will include Zartan and a Cobra Trooper. Now, I don't think the next wave is actually going to be out until next year, so we still got a ways to wait. But I am expecting we'll probably see those figures. I'm told movie figures have been delayed. Uh, this isn't 100%, but but this is uh, from sources I've been checking with. They tell me the movie figures, which you know, I think were originally slated for Wave 3, are now pushed back. But it looks like we are definitely getting at least Zartan and Cobra Trooper. There's other rumblings I've been hearing going around. You know, Obviously, I, I've talked about Lady J has been mentioned. Uh, I don't have a firm confirmation on that one. Uh, Barbecue is another one, I think, because it showed up at you know months ago in the target computer zartan showed up you know others so uh, you know we'll have to wait and see but i am expecting to see uh the zartan and whatever this regular non-target exclusive cobra trooper is but anyway uh, so i just wanted to share that with you and again if hasbro decides to give us specific times for each of these panels we'll be sure to update that information on the websites and i'm sure i'll be talking to you again before between now and 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 the hasbro pulse event Okay, and then while we're on the subject of Hasbro, let's talk a little bit of Star Wars. So this is a follow-up from a story I talked about in the last news video. So I told you last time that there was a Black Series figure based on the Mandalorian TV series of the Armorer. There's also one of the Incinerator Trooper. But since I last talked to you, uh, some out-of-the-packaging images for the Armorer figure. These come from Kyle Collector on Instagram. And uh, he, gra he got a hold of some images that, for, I don't think these are his specific images, but somebody who has this figure in hand sent him images of the figure out of the packaging. And with these new images, you can see that uh, yeah, the figure does have the fur piece. It's not, it, it is plastic. Uh, I know some people were hoping it was like a soft goods type thing, but it is uh, plastic that just plugs into the back of the figure. And then there's also uh, her tools that you see her use in this series. So that is figure number four in the series. The, the incinerator trooper is figure number three. Uh, the Mandalorian is, is number one. And I think that stormtrooper uh, that's supposed to be based, even though he's way clean, is based on uh, the, the Mandalorian. And that's figure number two. And looks like based on the artwork for the packaging, there is at least one more figure in this series. Uh, coming in the near future so uh, we'll have to see what that one actually is now sticking with star wars here hot toys this morning re released some images for a couple of new empire strikes back figures so first of all boba fett we're getting an empire strikes back boba fett which this will come in retro style packaging and you get all the things you would expect with Fett. You get his blaster, you get his rifle, you get his jet pack, you get multiple pairs of hands, you get the wrist bracelets but you also get some alternate versions uh, with different paint applications uh, kind of in keeping uh, with that retro look as well with his jetpack and his helmet and stuff. So that's kind of cool. And then the other figure they release new images for is Lando Calrissian. So he too is going to be in you know, retro style packaging. He comes with a Stormtrooper blaster. He comes with a Bespin type blaster. He comes with multiple pairs of hands, a flight stand, a backdrop that looks like you know from a scene from Cloud City, the communicator that he used, uh, and, and the wrist communicator or the thing that he tapped to alert Lobot in the movie. So um, uh, likeness looks pretty good to Billy D there. He's got a soft goods cape and all. So these figures are not yet up for pre-order, but probably will be going up at places like Big Bad Toy Store in the next few days. Okay, and then switching over to Marvel. So first of all, we got new images for that SH Figure Arts Avengers Endgame Final Battle Thanos figure. Now we've seen this figure, we've seen some images for this figure already, but this figure is going to be going up for pre-order pretty soon at places like our sponsor Big Bad Toy Store. I don't think it's up yet, but it should be going up very soon. Now with this figure, it is said to be a new sculpted figure uh, with better articulation than the previous Endgame Thanos figure. You also get added accessories, things. Uh, the coolest things are probably the pipe that he can sit on, and then you also get a little base piece that you can stick the double-bladed weapon into so it looks like it's sticking out of the ground. You also get his helmet, so you can stick that on top of, of the double-bladed weapon, essentially recreating that scene where Thanos is sitting there waiting for the Avengers to come greet him. So that's definitely cool. You get uh, the Nano Gauntlet, two versions, one with the stones and one without with the snapping action. So, you know, this is definitely a much improved version, it looks like, over the previous Endgame Thanos. 
as I always say with these final uh, battle versions, though, you know, it does suck. You know, it's bad enough when a company like Hasbro does this kind of thing and you have to pay, you know, 20 bucks for the figure. But when you're talking about these really more expensive figures, you know, it definitely sucks that, you know, if you bought the first one that you then have to turn around and buy the second one to get the better version. I wish they would just either wait, if they don't have the source material to make these figures correctly the first time, I wish they would just wait. Um, by now, I think most of us have kind of come to realize they're gonna do this on a regular basis, so we kind of wait and see if they're gonna do a better version down the road before we get the first one, but you know, if you didn't wait, you know, like I said, it, it does kind of suck in my opinion that you have to buy a second one. But if you hadn't gotten the first one, this is one I think is definitely worth checking out. Okay, and then Diamond Select Toys had a little bit of a surprise for us, and they are their next Marvel Select 7-inch scale regular release figure is going to be Iron Man based on the Silver Centurion armor. So Hasbro just gave us a version, which is the Walgreens exclusive, but now Diamond Select Toys is going to be doing one as well. And I gotta be honest, I kinda like this Diamond Select toy one a little bit better than, I, I don't actually have the Hasbro one yet. Uh, I have not yet found that one. But from the images and reviews I've seen of the Marvel Legend one, you know, I'm kind of liking this one a little bit better. I like the shoulders. I think they're a little more comic book accurate. And I think the paint applications, at least based on these images, are a little more solid. You also get quite a few accessories with this figure. So you get the normal head sculpt and then you get a uh, Tony Stark, uh, you know, an uh, uh, 80s Tony Stark type head sculpt. You get uh, these goggle pieces that I, I, I don't recall this specifically, but I'm going to assume this is something from the comics. But, you know, these little eye lenses that come are made to look like come out of his helmet. So you get the little piece that pops up on the helmet. I think I, I, I won't swear because the, the, the solicitation information doesn't say specifically. I guess this is actually an alternate head. Because you can tell on the regular head, it, it doesn't have the open piece. So this looks like, it, I guess, it's just an alternate head. And then you also get, uh, beyond that, you get some blast effect pieces. So you get your standard repulsor blast effect pieces. You get the blast effect piece that comes out of the unibeam uh, there on his chest. And then you also get some jet blast effects as well. So... Um, they've kind of loaded this one up, and you know, if you're a fan of this armor like I am, this is probably one you're going to want to check out. Now, this figure is available for pre order now, so you can get it at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store, and it is slated with a February of 2021 release date. And one last thing this isn't really news, and I can't say 100%, but I've seen this pop up a few times online from people, and I think it's causing some confusion. So, Walgreens have been putting out some store tags for an Eternals assortment and a figure called Twilight, which I think people are, are assuming is part of the Eternals. It is not. So, first of all, uh, the Twilight is just the code name that they used for their Moon Knight figure, their exclusive Moon Knight figure that's been out for quite a while now. And these images come uh, via Mr. Baggin, who I appreciate uh, sending this in. And I don't want to try and pronounce your first name because I would totally butcher it. But um, he, he sent these from his store of these tags. And I've seen you know these showing up at multiple stores. So he's not the only one that's noticed this. But the Twilight figure is just reference to, you know, as Walgreens are doing their resets, they're putting out these new tags which they're obviously you know printing off from their computer system and i don't know why they didn't update the name the twilight name which was the original code name that they were using for moon knight before we knew it was coming so that we couldn't figure it out but that's all that is and then the eternals wave has been everything i've heard and seen says that wave is delayed until next year um, so I don't think you're going to see uh, Eternals figures showing up anytime soon at Walgreens. Again, I think somebody just hasn't updated their computer system. You know, you know, this was the time when the figures were originally going to be start seeing release. And so obviously they're still listed as such in the Walgreens computer system. So, you know, somebody who doesn't know anything about Marvel Legends is just printing these off and putting them out on, on the pegs. But um, again, everything I've seen and heard would indicate Eternals are not going to start hitting until next year. Uh, you know, I think if, if Walgreens was about to start putting out Eternals figures on their shelves, I would almost guarantee we'd already see them by now. Somebody would have gotten pictures of them. You know, we saw that one leaked Ajax figure, but that I don't even think is, is coming to Walgreens. Um, but if, if, if there was a wave of figures that was about to hit shelves, believe me, we would already have seen it. 
um, with these wall. I mean, I am surprised actually that the Eternals figures, which I'm sure are sitting in some warehouse someplace, haven't leaked out more. But but I guarantee you, if if a store like Walgreens was about to put them out on their shelves, we would have already seen them by now. And I've also I've just done checking with other sources, and everything I've heard is you know because of the movie, the Eternals wave is delayed. So. Um, I just wanted to clarify that because, again, I've seen this pop up uh, uh, a few different times and it seems to be causing some confusion. Okay, now let's jump into some Masters of the Universe news. So following up on a story I talked about in the last news video, I told you how there had been some indications from a, a distributor online that was listing a Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull playset. And then we even had an image that uh, surfaced that was said to be the interior of that playset. Now I've done some additional checking. You know, one of the things that I found odd was that this distributor was listing it the, this playset with the November release date, and Mattel had previously told us that you know Walmart would be the only place that that could sell Masters of the Universe Origin stuff. For this year next year it would be opening up wide but but this year it was only going to be uh, essentially um, walmart since then however so first of all we've gotten indications that it looks like the that masters of the universe origins will be going uh, retail wide starting in november so a little bit sooner than expected and the main reason why i say that is amazon has started taking pre-orders for a lot of the masters of the universe origin figures which they are listing with a November 15th release date. So figures like, uh, mostly like from the second wave, uh, still haven't seen the first wave pop up on there, like He-Man and Skeletor, but figures like uh, Scareglow and uh, um, Manny Faces are up for pre-order on there. Man at Arms is listed on there. Uh, Beastman is on there, which is from the first wave. He, he is listed on there. There's an Orco figure listed, but it's actually being sold right now through the their international, their Amazon international store. So that means you have to pay more in shipping. So hopefully you'll be able to get it through regular Amazon here soon. Uh, so like if you're like me and you have Prime, you don't have to pay any shipping at all. Uh, it's also, I mean, it's like 15 bucks which is a, like a dollar more expensive than, than the regular figures. But, but like I said, hopefully Orca will pop up as a regular release on Amazon. There's also a placeholder right now for Trapjaw. He does not appear to be available for purchase at this time. I don't think he has been available for purchase or pre-order yet, but there is a placeholder. Now we have links to all these on TNI. I will put a link to that. So if you wanna check out each of the individual links for each figure, if you don't wanna to have to try and search around for them, as of right now, Trapjaw does, Trap doesn't even come up. On, if you just did a search for Masters of the Universe Origins, he doesn't actually pop up. So um, again, it's a placeholder and the figure has not yet been made available. I suspect the, the Castle Grayskull playset might go up for pre-order there soon. And uh, I've also gotten indications that it has shown up in the Target store computers, uh, the Castle Grayskull playset along with other Masters of the Universe Origins stuff. And then I've checked with a few additional sources that I personally feel confident in who have told me that yes, there is a Origins playset. So um, I'm about 99.9%, .9%, I was pretty unsure when I talked about this last time, but I'm about 99.9% .9 sure now that, that the playset is happening. Now I have not been able to confirm from any of my sources the legitimacy of this image that popped up. I'm going to assume it's legitimate, and if it is, it looks like this is just a, a retooled, a slightly retooled version of their original Castle Grayskull playset, not to be mistaken with the larger, more detailed Classics one that was released through Maddie Collector. Now, the price point is said to be between 75 and 80 bucks. I think it'll be a little more expensive maybe at the small e-tailers, and then places like Target and such will probably have it for around 75 bucks. but that's the price range between 75 and 80 so for a playset like that in, in this day and age, that's not terribly expensive. But again, don't don't think this is going to be like the, a reissue of the Classics playset that, that Maddie Collector did for the Classics line. This looks more like it's just a retooled, slightly retooled version of the original playset. For you NECA fans, the only thing I really have for you today is they released some new updated images for their 7-inch scale Ultimate Marty McFly figure from Back to the Future. So this is based on the first movie. There's also the second movie, Marty McFly and the, the Biff Tannen, which is actually uh, more based on the second movie. 
those figures have actually shown up overseas and there's actually video reviews up we've posted some images and, and rev those reviews up on TNI but these are official images put out by NECA for the first Marty McFly figure which is said to be out in very early October so um, you know this is going to be out pretty soon should be available everywhere it is available for pre-order at places like our sponsor Big Bad Toy Store Overall, I would say this figure looks pretty good. Um, you know, I think it looks like Michael J. Fox. The only thing, I, my only slight problem with it is the eyes do look a little bit off to me. I think it's the paint on the eyes. I don't know if that's how the final release will look, but but I would, would say, you know, I've seen some people complaining they don't think it looks like Michael J. Fox. I think it looks like Fox. I just think the eyes throw it off a little bit. So hopefully maybe that's something they'll fix in the final release version. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But like I said, if you're interested in this figure, it is available for pre-order and should be out in early October. For you Mezco fans, so this week Mezco teased that they're going to be doing another uh, Batman Supreme Knight figure, which is going to be exclusive to their website. They're timing it with the official Batman Day, which is this coming Saturday. So uh, uh, th it should be going up for pre-order at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then just today, these uh, these images showed up online from the Instagram handle Mezco HK. I am assuming these are this is the actual figure. This doesn't look like the figure they te they had in their little teaser that they put up the other day, but I don't know if that was the uh, supposed to be the actual figure or what. So this figure does look different from that, but but uh, I think this is the figure that they're going to be offering uh, on Saturday tomorrow um, for Batman Day. Okay, and while we're on the subject of Batman, let's jump into McFarlane toys. So I've got quite a bit of McFarlane news to share with you today. So first of all. Um, right after my last news video, McFarlane revealed this variant figure that they are releasing as a Target Store exclusive. So it is a repaint of the White Knight Batman figure. It is done in red colors, which I know has thrown off a lot of people. I think the idea behind this figure is that it's supposed to mimic the artwork from the White Knight storyline, which if you're familiar with, you know, has a lot of red tints to it. Um, you know, Batman doesn't wear red, obviously. I've heard a lot of Daredevil jokes with this figure. But, but if, you, if you've seen the artwork, a lot of the covers, things like that, it's just very red. So I think that's what they were going for with this. You know, we know McFarlane loves Batman. We know they love repaints. So, you know, I, th I think that's why they did it. But this is going to be a Target Store exclusive. It is going to be out in March. So of next year, so it is a ways off from, from being released. But you know, if you're into all things Batman, this is one you might want to check out. Also, we've gotten better looks at the Arkham Asylum 2-pack that I talked about previously. These images come via our sponsor, Robot Kingdom. They are an overseas retailer. They do have this set in stock now. While this set has not been officially announced by McFarlane, so we don't know how here in the United States it's going to be released. Again, it is out overseas, and, and if you want to pick it up, you can go to places like Robot Kingdom. But with this, you know, we had seen an image that had popped up online the last time I talked about this set. This, these new images give us a better look. Now, I'm still not entirely sure what this set is supposed to be based on. If anything, obviously, it's kind of like a battle damage look. Batman's dirty. And then you've got the green stuff all over uh, both Batman's sleeve and the Joker, and he's got it on his mouth. Now, the best thing I could find that this kind of matches up to is artwork, which I know technically isn't based on the artwork from the Art Asylum video game. But again, this is really the closest thing I could find with the green around the Joker's mouth and such. So I don't know if this is what they were kind of paying tribute to. Obviously, the figures, you know, the artwork's in black and white and the figures are not. So, you know, again, this may just be some random thing that they decided to do. Uh, they like the green and, and, and went with the battle damage. But if and these are just repaints of of uh, the previous figures that they done. Originally, I thought this was using the head sculpt. I thought the Joker figure was using the head sculpt of the one that's used on the the bronze chase variant joker which is a little bit different from the regular release version but based on these new images best i can tell this is actually just the same head sculpt that they used on the previous uh, regular uh, sculpted uh, figure so um really the only difference with these you do it looks like there's an added tire accessory in there um i think all the other accessories that that we're seeing in these images were included with the original figures 
And then, like I said, you get the paint variations. And then finally for DC, this one will treat as rumor, but it is a new listing that showed up on an overseas retail site. I talked about in a previous video how um, you know we saw last weekend McFarlane revealed a prototype for the DC Metals Batman, um, the drowned figure. And so we know that figure is definitely coming. And then I told you about how there had been overseas listings for two other figures to essentially ship with that figure, which were the Red Sun Superman and the Damian Robin. So I don't have any more details on, on those to share with you, but I do have a new wave of figures that has shown up. This is going to be another build a figure wave if, if these listings are correct. And again, these have not been officially confirmed by McFarlane. But these are said to be based, these, this wave is going to be based on the storyline, uh, the Batman, the Last Night on Earth storyline. And, you know, this uh, series, it was written by Scott Snyder and features artwork from Greg Capullo. Um, he did some of the covers and stuff. So um, the figures that are slated for this are Batman. And again, these are all supposed to supposedly going to be based on you know how they appeared in the storyline which are kind of you know their alternate versions of, of these characters essentially so batman who ha i'm guessing will have the severed joker head because that looks like something that would be, would be right up mcfarland's alley we've got uh wonder woman with uh the mohawk type look and we've got uh the character named omega and then uh, the Scarecrow is the final regular figure in the wave. Now in that story, which I haven't actually read, but I did a little bit of research and you know, I think Scarecrow uh, and, and Bane were kind of, uh, you know, Scarecrow rode around on Bane's back and such. So the Build-A-Figure for this uh, wave is said to be Bane. So, um, which looks very much like, you know, pretty much like a regular comic book version. So I'm guessing it's gonna be the same size as like the Devastator figure, uh, so. You know, should have a good size to it. So even if you don't like these alternate versions of Batman, you know, I, the Bane figure might be one that you want to check out. Okay, so uh, real quick, just as I was filming today's video, we got some breaking news, a confirmation that this uh, last night on Earth wave with the Bane build a figure is in fact 100% uh, coming. Uh, Todd McFarlane has now released a video showing off some of the prototypes and they've also released some official images of the four regular figures. Still no image yet of the Build-A-Figure, the Bane Build-A-Figure, but Todd in his video says that the Build-A-Figure will be as big as the Devastator, which is what I figured. Uh, the, the Batman figure will come with the severed Joker head and, and Wonder Woman's got a helmeted head and an unhelmeted head. So. Um, these are definitely coming though, and so uh, I just uh, breaking news as I was filming uh, this video. Okay, and that's it for DC, but I do have a couple other bits of McFarlane news I wanted to share with you guys today. So first of all, this week we got some reveals for additional Witcher figures based on the Witcher of the Wild Hunt video game. So we knew these figures were coming, they were listed. Um, there's the regular version of the, the Geralt figure. We've got the Walmart exclusive one that we'd previously seen. This is essentially a repaint. It is the same figure if you look at it closely, but I think they've done a pretty good job with it, you know, making, differing it up. So even though it's essentially the same uh, figure, you know, it looks, it looks, uh, you know, pretty good. If you're a fan of this character, you probably will want to end up getting both versions of these if, if you can find them, that is. Again, the other one's a Walmart exclusive, so that one's probably gonna be the harder of the two to find. This one will be released everywhere. Uh, the, this figure, along with the second one, they revealed the glass figure, which I think looks pretty good as well. These Both, both of these figures are slated for release in March, 2021. And with the second figure, you know, I think the detailing's nice. He's got the sword and everything. So um, again, if you're a fan of, of this particular property, I've seen the series, I've never played the Witcher video games, but I, I watched the Netflix series once, which I thought was pretty good. So um, these again are based on the video game though, and I have not actually played the game. So it's not a property I'm super entrenched in, but you know, overall it seems like they're doing a pretty good job with these. And then final bit of news I have for you guys today is on the Dune front. So I told you about these figures, we saw the initial images. But now we have more detailed images that I wanted to go on and share with you guys today for the four regular release figures, the seven inch scale figures of Paul, Duke, Duncan, and Lady Jessica. And then there's the Build-A-Figure. I don't have an updated image for the Build-A-Figure, um, but do have updated images for the 12 inch figure that they're doing based on the Baron. 
So um, all of these are regular release figures and they should be out later this year. Uh, the Paul figure is going to come with three knives. Uh, all of them have uh, the masks, which I assume you can put up over their face faces if you want to. Um, but they have the masks, and then they come each come with a figure stand, like we always see the circle base. And then uh, with Paul, you get the legs for the build a figure. With the Duke figure, you get a knife, uh, you get a backpack which is removable, and you get the torso piece with the build a figure. With Duncan, you get two swords. And, and the arms for the Build-A-Figure. And then Lady Jessica comes with a knife. And then she comes with the weapons for the Build-A-Figure. I think that's a whip-type weapon and a machete-type weapon. And then she also comes with the head, the Batista-like head for, for the Build-A-Figure. And then the 12-inch figure looks like just has a display base that you can use to make it look like he's levitating in the air like you see in the movie. Okay, so that's it for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about in the comment section below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Next week is gonna be very busy with all the, the PulseCon reveals and everything that I'm hoping are gonna be made, uh, plus you know whatever other news breaks during the week. So definitely expect to hear from me a lot next week. Um, but as always, stay safe. Remember the contest on both Toy News International and Marvelous News where we're giving away $100 store credits. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to alert it every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great.